Welcome traders to another Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 22nd of August with me Patrick Munley. Starting in the US, the market really remains split as to whether the Federal Reserve will hike rates by 50 or 75 basis points on the 21st of September, but things may become clearer after the annual Jackson Hole Policy Symposium, which begins on Thursday. We'll see Fed officials and other global central bankers, finance ministers and academics converging in Wyoming. Fed Chair Powell will give the keynote speech. However, even after this event, it is all to play for for the August jobs report to be published on the 2nd of September and the August inflation report on the 13th of September. Markets currently favour a 50 basis point move in September and November with a final 25 basis point hike in December. But should payrolls rise strongly yet again, 350,000 plus, and an inflation move upwards, then it would look likely to switch that to a 75 basis point hike in September. Now, outside of the Jackson Hole Symposium, in terms of the data calendar, uh, today, Monday, we get July, Chicago Fed Activity Index, regional surveys remain very volatile of late. Heading into Tuesday, manufacturing PMI, 52 is what the market's looking for. S&P PMIs point to much weaker conditions than the ISMs, potentially implying a larger effect on small to mid-sized firms. We also get Global Services PMI looking for an improvement there from the last time out, 47.3, looking for a 50.2. We get the August Richmond Fed Index. Again, expect volatility in that data. And then July new home sales, uh, last month down 8.1%. Looking for a negative 1.7% as the housing sector is under significant and probably lasting pressure. On Wednesday, we get uh, July durable goods orders. Looking for a 0.6% print there. Investment partials point to uh, material deterioration in spend. We also get July pending home sales. Looking for a negative 2.5% housing sector as ever under significant pressure at the moment with the rates increases. And then heading into Thursday, we get the second quarter GDP looking for a negative 0.9%. Q2's weak consumer, a big risk for the outlook there. Initial claims, obviously 250k expected. They're remaining capped below that 270 level for now. And then running out on Friday, we get July wholesale inventories. Unwanted infantry accrual, uh, a risk given the end of the demand cycle. Uh, we also get July personal income, 0.6%. Real income will remain under pressure until inflation comes back to more normal levels in 2023. We also get the July PCE deflator, looking for a 0.1% print there. Uh, consumption will remain at risk until those rates normalize. And we round it out with the August University of Michigan sentiment, looking for 551 As we know, consumption really is likely to remain weak now into the 20. Uh, 2023 period and uh, as mentioned Jackson Hole Symposium closes out with Fed Chair Powell's speech on Friday. So from a technical perspective dollar index has seen a sharp recovery from the support zone just below 105. Now looking for a retest of price cycle highs 109.15 monthly projected range resistance. May see a bit of a pullback there certainly if we maintain uh, momentum divergence any pop higher into the 110.30 127 extension of this last corrective phase i would be watching for bearish reversal patterns there to play the range for another move back down to test support at the 105 level. Moving to the Eurozone, in terms of data heading into this week, we are looking at Tuesday, manufacturing PMI 49.3, manufacturing tipping into contraction in the Eurozone, services PMI likely 50.5, services growth feeling the pressure pressure from cooling demand. We also get August consumer confidence looking for a negative 28 there. Inflation pressures continuing to weigh on capacity spending and sentiment. And then on Thursday, we get the German August EFO business climate survey looking for an 86.6% there. The outlook highly uncertain and is set to remain that way in the Eurozone for now. And that rounds out the data from the Eurozone. So looking at the technical setup, we could not break out of the descending trend channel resistance area. As such, we are now back looking for a retest of price cycle lows at 99.50s. 
we will be watching then for momentum divergence to be maintained. I'm looking for any test into the 127 extension, 9760s, uh, also the yearly S3 to provide some support, at least for a move back in to test the prior highs here into the 10350s. And in the UK, what do we have on the data slate there? Um, starts tomorrow, Tuesday, manufacturing PMI 52.1. Manufacturing output has hit a 24 month low in the UK. We also get services PMI, services equally under pressure from rampant inflation in the UK. And that really is the only data of note uh, this week from the UK perspective. Uh, from a technical perspective, sterling under pressure and we are now looking for a break of the price cycle lows, 117.60s. Uh, Any pullbacks to remain uh, offered. And as such, I'm looking for a move down to test 115 as the next support level on the downside. And in Japan, it uh, is exceptionally quiet uh, on the data front. There are only one, well, two uh, prints of note, Japan, PMI services, subdued near-term outlook for the services and the manufacturing sector, which also uh, comes out tomorrow, uh, Tuesday, looking for a uh, 52 print there. And that is the only data of note in Japan this week. So from a technical perspective, uh, Dolly, and I'm looking for uh, resistance to be maintained into this 137.50. If so, then we have a downside of quality objective, 128.70s. Uh, from there, I'd be looking for that to complete a three-way corrective move before setting the next leg of advance up through that 140, looking for a minimum 142.70 on the upside. Heading down under to Australia. The data of note there is the Wednesday the 24th, we get the RBA head of domestic markets speaking at climate change risks in the financial system in Sydney. And that is the only data of note uh, this week in terms of Australia. The Aussie dollar likely to take its lead from, uh, from the dollar index. Looking at the technical setup, I'd highlighted this potential pitchfork play. We're getting pretty close to testing what should be the support area here. If we can hold the 168.30s, then I'd be looking for a move back up into test resistance again at the 7120s. However, if we lose that 6830s, I want to be engaged on the short side, looking for a move down to that weekly equality objective 6640s for once again trying to recover to the upside. And we'll just wrap things up here by taking a quick look at Bitcoin. Still in this uh, corrective channel here, I'm looking now for any loss at the 21,000 level to start the next leg to the downside and we have that long-awaited weekly equality objective 12,185 as the downside objective and that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing august the 22nd as always traders plan the trade trade the plan and most importantly manage your risk until next time thanks very much